our highest potential lies within our light, not our shadow. Yes, there is always a gift to be unwrapped when we work with our, our shadow and therefore it gives birth to a higher potential. But if we want to work with our shadows, then we need to embrace them with our light. We have to open and lift our vibration to at least the fifth dimension where we can sit in compassion for oneself to a point where we can at least sit and like a parent would hold the child. Welcome to the Cosmic Love Antenna Podcast. This podcast is meant to encourage you to connect within so you can share your light with the world. And now, here's your host, Harrison Ma. Harrison Ma. Harrison Ma. Welcome, beautiful beings, to another episode of the Cosmic Love Antenna. This is your weekly installment of your inner connection to your outer expression, where I, your host, Harrison, here with the beautiful guests that I get to have a cosmic dance with, set the intention of pulling back the layers, restricting health, alignment, and love. And today's episode is an exciting one, and I can't wait to introduce my guest to you in two seconds but just as we get started set the foundations here if you're new to the show welcome i feel you we feel you in this space i'm honored that you're listening to this show remember if you're a new guest or you're a returning listener ways that you can support this episode today give us a bit of love for the love that we're giving out is just share this episode if you get some value from me or the beautiful guest who i'm going to introduce in a second Share it with a friend, family member, a lover that you feel can get the same amount of insight and deep diving. Same with Apple and Spotify. If you get some insights, go over to Apple and leave it for us. Let us know what you got out of this deep dive conversation today. With all that said, I am so honored, so excited, so grateful to introduce this beautiful woman that I'll get to have a chat with today. Joe Rushton is a holistic health and energy therapist. She's a teacher. She's an author. She's a spiritual guide. She is a part of the Czech family and tribe, much like myself. But as you'll see today, there is so much more to her beautiful soul that I want to share with you and dive deeply into. And today together, we're going to talk about what it means to walk the spiritual path, what we have wrong, about shadow work, opening up your beautiful divine channel, working with guides and ascended masters, what the ascension process really is, and so much more. Joe, welcome to the Cosmic Love Antenna. Thank you, Harrison. It's just beautiful to be here with you in this energy, Mm. this beautiful cosmic. I love the fact that we're going to have a cosmic dance. Yeah, that's I can't think of a, a better partner, my friends. I can't. I'm so excited. Joe, before I uh, sort of throw you my first question here, I want to just share a bit of love with you. Well, we're going to share a lot of love today, but this is sort of top of my heart. And I think you know this, but I just want to say it. I, We all walk a hero's journey in this path that we take as a spiritual being, having a human experience. and part of the hero's journey is as you well know is finding the the mentor to come in to to help you on that journey right when you hit a pain or a challenge and you want to go deeper into yourself and you have been that mentor for me not once but twice and i'm just i'm really honored i'm really grateful for the soul that you are the the loving human that you are and I just wanted to start this episode by sharing some gratitude and some love. Thank you for shining your light so bright so I could Mm. find mine. Mm. Thank you. Thank you for that beautiful acknowledgement. And it's an honor to be able to assist and mentor whenever that is an opportunity. It's that's what we're all here doing, Mm. supporting each other to embrace our light to really see it, feel it, know it, and understand it. And that's why I've I've titled this episode today, Joe, the Walking the Spiritual Path of Love. And I, I could not mm-hmm. think of a, a better way to describe 
you know, the work that you do in the world, the work that I aim to do in the world. And we're going to get into all the little parts of that today. So the first question I want to throw you, Joe, for all the people listening that are maybe new to your voice, haven't heard you before. I I like diving a little bit into your background and one of our, a mentor that we both share, Mr. Paul Check, talks a lot about the pain teacher. And I, I'd be interested to know, Joe, just so people can get a little bit of your history. What what comes to your heart, your mind, when I ask you the question, what do you think is, I know you've probably had multiple, but what is the pain teacher or, or the top one or two pain teachers that have allowed you to be the light that you are here in this moment? Well, when I look at the more challenging initiations that I've had in my life, uh, the I guess the first the first pain teacher for me uh, was in my uh, early twenties when I was coming to terms with my sexuality and making uh, a choice to embrace what it was that I was feeling and wanting to uh, express and experience and meet along with that, meet all the parts of me that had either been conditioned or programmed to uh, tell me that, you know, what I wanted and what I wanted to experience was either wrong, uh, sinful, or, um, you know, I, in fact, I always remember, um, I think it was my dad that that even said to me, you know, you know you are choosing a very difficult path. <laughs> and in hindsight, I look back and I go, I don't know that any path is easy. <laughs> any path that you're choosing to really uh, embrace and walk, walk a spiritual path, um, uh, you know, initiations are exactly that. They are initiations of learning and growth. And none of that comes without the growing pains. None of that comes without discomfort. Uh, so I, I think that my first pain teacher was uh, the teacher that, that that really taught me the importance of being honest with myself. And of course, for the first three years that I was really in the in the closet for, um, the the pain and suffering that that created through you know choosing to hide out of fear, um, you know the pain teacher was there to teach me about what it was that I was fearing and what was held within the illusion of that fear, which is of course meeting my own truth. Uh, and of course, when I did, then as all truth does, it sets you free and it liberates you uh, and it sets you on a path that moves you forward towards your greater potential. Uh, so I would say that that would be the first pain teacher that I had. It was a, a, a very emotional one. Yes. Uh, Joe, can I ask what, how old were you when you did take that step to come out? I was, um, oh gosh, how old was I? Uh, Another life. I know, it feels like it. Um, I reckon I was 26. 20, uh, well, no, 20, 25, because I came out to Australia when I was 26. And uh, I came out to my family about a year before. Mm. Can I ask, and and you're alluding to it a lot in what you're sharing. So first of all, thank you for sharing that story, my friend. I've I've heard you share it before in other in other shows, but I, I'm honoured that you shared it with me in this space. Uh, can I ask a question? When you did sort of acknowledge that piece of yourself at 26, and you stepped into that, did it come with any other light aspects? Obviously, you're accepting your your sexual identity. Did it unlock anything else? Mm, it, courage, 
bravery, vulnerability, um, a congruence within myself, um, a, a courage and a bravery that allowed me then to face other challenges in my life. Um, you know, that was a fairly big one to, to meet early on. Um, and I believe it gave me the impetus, the catalyst to really feel, well, if I can, if I can move through this challenge, then, you know, that felt pretty big in all areas of my life, uh, because naturally it, it, it challenged me and my fears um, across all the different areas of my life. And the more I embraced myself and my choices and all parts of myself, the more courage, the more strength I had to, uh, m- you know, move forward in my life and meet meet the next initiations. You know, the next big initiation was would have been in my early 40s when uh, or sorry, late, late thirties, late thirties, forties. Um, and that metamorphosis that we go through when we are transitioning in careers and we're transitioning in our own consciousness and we're having this, you know, upgrade of consciousness and we're wanting to manifest that new upgrade and I had to meet a you know th- that was an initiation of of meeting a different side of my ego um and <laughs> and and that brought with it a lot of a lot of challenges around really letting go of what my ego believed I was here to do and to offer and there's been years of surrendering to that. <laughs> I think it's, thank you for sharing that, Joe. I think it's it's interesting in both those instances that you just described. And I'm noticing this in myself at the moment. And it's something I'm constantly reminding myself and people that are in my world that I get the pleasure to teach and coach is we, we're not just healing for the sake of healing. We're not just moving through challenges and pains for the sake of doing that that's obviously a part of it but i think and we're going to get to this a bit later when we talk about shadow work but we often don't acknowledge the light the different light aspects that are set free or or brought into our awareness when we move through a challenge like it's so easy for us to focus in on what is the pain on the spiritual path or what is the the thing that is that is full of resistance and in that act we inadvertently ignore the beautiful light that's there either helping us or the light that's been unlocked through the pain. Does that, mm. does that resonate? Yes. yes. We, in most cases, are so much more familiar with our shadow aspects than we are our light aspects. And in, in most cases, of course, we, well, I guess it goes, you know, hand in hand with, uh joy the phenomenon of joy and happiness is that it won't kill you and so it offers you no um no danger and so you know we're hardwired as in the reptilian brain to um be aware of yeah be aware of danger and to you know to always be on alert for for that which is a potential threat and hence why we are so much more hardwired to looking for the problem, i.e. the shadow, and resonate to the density of that energy rather than the enlightenment of our light Um, because that holds no threat. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, we'll... um... We'll talk more about that in a second because I, I can't wait to <laughs> share a story that I know Joe finds really funny. But we'll um, hold that thought, Joe. We'll come back to that. I want to, <laughs> a question I want to throw you now on top of that. Thank you for sharing 
a bit of your background and a bit of your pain teachers and the journey you've taken. Uh, some of these questions that I want to throw you, Joe, you know, I've asked these myself and actually you've mm -hmm. helped me in a lot of ways answer these for myself and come back to remembrances. And I want to activate that for the people listening now. So I guess the first one I want to throw your way and you answered it a little bit. I'd love for you to dive a bit deeper. How, how would you define or what does it mean to you, Joe, to walk the spiritual path? What does that, what does that look like in your day-to-day -day life? What it looks like now for me is to every day come into an acknowledgement of, of my spirit, of my light. To walk the spiritual path for me is to acknowledge uh, the, the non-physical manifested self that is always impacting and influencing the manifested self. And so for me to walk a spiritual path, it's, it's first of all to come into acknowledgement of my light, of that part of me that, that, that can't be weighed, can't be measured, doesn't hold a form as such, and yet its vibration and its consciousness is always manifesting into form. And to walk a spiritual path for me is to acknowledge that light, to acknowledge the uh, spark of light that is in all conscious, sentient beings, and to take responsibility for that light. So to take responsibility for my energy and my consciousness and what I'm choosing to create with it and how it affects the field of energy around me. Um, that's what walking a spiritual path for me today is. And somebody asked me the other day, um, uh, they, you know, they asked, you know, who, how would you describe yourself? Like, you know, who are you? And, and, and the truth, the truth is I've, I've really more and more, I've just come to uh, realize that it's not a question that can be answered because you are always becoming. You're always becoming. I'm not the same person as I was yesterday. You know, I was doing a, a coaching session with a couple um, a couple of days ago, and one of the things that I said was, you know, when you when you get married, nobody tells you that in actual fact, what should be somewhere within the disclaimer of your vows is that I vow not to be the same person in 10 years time that you're marrying right now. So sign this disclaimer because I've got no idea what that's going to look like in 10 years. Um, you know, and that's, that's the truth is that we are constantly evolving and changing. And uh, that's part of what we're here to embrace. I think a really big part of that too, Joe, is the that's the that's why the soul is here in human form to be a part of that classroom, right? It's to be part of that beautiful experience that is ever changing and testing and evolving and and reacting and and creating and and dancing. That if it wasn't that, and I think a lot of people. This is where a lot of disease comes from, right? A lot of you know um, challenge, whether it's across the mental, emotional, physical, or spiritual body, is when we are denying that part of ourselves, when we're denying that constant change, right? That that you know, as the Buddha said, change is the only thing that is that is the real thing. This change is always happening all the time. But as you said beautifully before, I, we make choices. And whether we're embracing that change or we're, or we're either consciously or unconsciously most of the time suppressing and ignoring the change and, and sort of moving away from it, mm -hmm. right? Does that resonate? Mm -hmm. It does. You know, this is why I feel so many people are challenged with the, the changing of their physical body over time and, you know, uh, resist, resist the 
the change in how the body functions, looks, appearances, because there is so much attachment to the physicality and putting more emphasis on the part of you that is physical as being the greater part of your truth. And yet, of course, it's the consciousness that is governing your physical body, your vessel that you are um, experiencing your spirit through. And disease is is a product of uh, the parts of us that are not connected to our truth. And we are all here walking a path of remembrance. And that is certainly more challenging for some than others to the degree in which they have um, either, you know, not everyone's born with faith. I don't believe that I was born with, with blind faith. I, you know, and I've certainly met those that, that are and have been. Um, I think and they trauma, do hold. Trauma is a big part of that too, right? Well, it, you know, yes and no, from because trauma again is the product of what you choose to create out of an experience. And so, you know, you and I could go and have a, 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 a you know, an experience. One of us may consider it traumatic and the other one may not. Um, and that's, you know, that's down to the programming that we hold. It's, it's, the stories that we have, the, you know, the belief systems that we're holding and, and the energy that we're holding that decides to respond, react accordingly. So, you know, it's really important that, that part of what people, part of what keeps people in the suffering of trauma is to believe that the trauma is the experience itself. Yeah. <laughs> And it's not. The trauma yeah. is kept alive by the stories you've created and the consciousness you've created as a result of that experience. Yeah. And the, and the emotion and the emotion that might be being stored because of that same consciousness, right? And you continue to, yes, trigger that emotion because you're continuing to play the same story. You can't change what you experienced, but you can change the beliefs that you hold around that experience. You can absolutely change the energy that you created through that experience that right there is your power that's your light that's your your spiritual power is to work with that light the power to choose a different vibration and to work with your energy to alchemize what is no longer serving you i'm happy you you took the words out of my out of my mouth when you said that's the power that we all have right and Speaking of powers, Joe, I want to ask you another question here now. For people listening to this podcast, uh, for long term, long time listeners, you've heard me most likely in other episodes refer to a lot of the education and training that I'm currently doing, and and the the mystery school and the spiritual practices and learnings that I'm currently in. And this beautiful woman that you're hearing speak now is actually a big part of that teaching. One of the mentors, big mentors in the school that's helping me along my spiritual journey activate specifically a bit a more of my spiritual gifts, my, my channeling and all the other things. So I'm wondering, Joe, if you can explain this a little bit now. And the question I really want to ask you is along this spiritual path that we're taking, how do we now start to open ourselves up to the gifts and the abilities that come along it, right? Such as our, our channel, such as our clear senses and our clairvoyance and our clear cognizance. What, what would you advise people listening that are obviously on this path and they're either stealing these abilities starting to form or they want to lean more into them? Well, I think the first step is to acknowledge. It's to acknowledge your divine channel to acknowledge your gifts. Again, what creates separation 
between our higher self consciousness and our lower mind's consciousness is again our beliefs. Mm. So for us to lean into the birthing and the development of our gifts, we have to lean into the shadow work that tells us otherwise. We have to lean into the beliefs that, you know, tell us otherwise about our gifts, that we're either not good enough or we can't do it or we don't have this or someone else is better than you or, you know, all the myriad of limiting thoughts and beliefs that the inner child and the ego self will will tell you about yourself um, as a way of, you know, creating separation. And separation is is an illusion. The only thing that creates us to feel separate is a choice to believe in that moment that we are separate. Our spirit is never separate from us. Our divine presence is never separate from us. It is a choice, however, to acknowledge your divine presence. It is a choice to make a conscious connection, just as it's a choice to, you know, choose what color shirt you're going to put on today. It's it's a choice to acknowledge that I am more than just my physical body. And it is a choice to want to go and explore and experience what that is for you. We, I believe, you know, and again, we're, we're all born with the same light quotient. Nobody, no soul is born with less or more light than the other. And yes, we all come in with unresolved karma that we, as a soul, through our initiations and through our incarnations, are, are being asked to, to work with, to resolve, so that we each time we resolve a part of ourself that is sitting in separation or out of balance, um, how do we know that? Because it's that part of us that creates chaos and drama in life, creates challenges and resistances. And the more that we you know, work with the energy that that part of us is, is holding, then you start to experience flow or grace or, um, you know, there's lots of different, yeah, love. There's lots of different words that people will give, you know, give to, you know, being in the zone or, uh, you know, however that they um, describe the experience of being at one with the creative flow of mm. spirit. Mm. I think, thank you for sharing that, Joe. And I think for me, you know, just listening to you speak all that, I, this word in the back of my head, and this is something that I'm moving through at the moment with my gifts, and I've shared this with you before, but it keeps coming back. And I, I, I think a big part of it is just how entrenched it is especially from an ancestral and past life view of unworthiness, right? When, mm. when, we, when we start connecting into our godly presence, our divine presence, our channel, our gifts, our expression of God that's in us, you know, whether it's through religious programming, whether it's through like um, collective pain and trauma from, you know, big events, whether it's the witch trials, whether it's, you know, we could go further back, name, pick many, right? That the word of unworthiness just and the and the frequency of it is 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 deep for me and I know for a lot of people listening. So I guess mm -hmm. what I would ask you is and you've shared with me before around this, but I'd love to hear it again. What how do you move through that unworthiness? Well, the first thing is to stop fighting with it. 
and acknowledge that this is a, a, a part of you, no matter how much you don't want to be experiencing its energy. The more you go into denial of it, suppression of it, you know, trying to, yeah, judgment over it, even, you know, trying to have this fix it mentality. Um, you, we've all heard what you resist persists. And the very first step in working with any uh, shadow aspect of yourself is to come into an acknowledgement of this part of you. I always give the analogy of um, the child because, you know, a good 95% of the shadow aspects we're working with are the, are the inner child, right? Not just this lifetime, but all the other incarnations that your soul has had and its experiences as a child mm-hmm. are carried forward. And, and, and Joe, just to interrupt you super quick, because I just want to acknowledge this point, but you don't know this, but people listening to this show, I've done so many episodes on the inner child. And I just, I'm always constantly trying to just promote that, you know, if you're going to start somewhere, start the inner child. So I just want to affirm mm. what your beautiful sharing that keep, keep going, keep going. Yeah, because it's, you know, um, the inner child, we're never not the child. And um, to to work with the consciousness of the inner child is is to really um, reclaim the, the innocent heart, and that is where your power lies. That is where the connection to your worthiness, to your spirit, lies is through opening once again into the purity of your heart, into the innocent heart. And so I always give the analogy of um, any aspect that you're working with, you've brought up unworthiness, which is a child aspect. And the very first thing that I share with, with clients is, you know, if you If you had a a five-year-old that came up to you crying from, you know, in a playground where they've just been, um, you know, ousted out of the group and, you know, told to go away and you you don't, you know, you're not welcome here and we don't want to play with you and rejected. and, um, And so there you have straight away, you know, that inner child, again, having an experience of, you know, I'm not worthy. He might not use the words, but he's certainly there experiencing that energy of something's wrong with me. I'm not worthy to be playing with these kids. And so, you know, here you are now as an adult self and you have the the inner child throwing a tantrum and the question now is, are you willing to step into the role of, of mystically parenting your own inner child? And so if a child came to you in the analogy I've just given you, and you're the adult in the scenario, you know, what are you going to do? Are you going to turn around and say, oh, well, go and grow up, you know, stop being such a baby. Go and go and find someone else to play with, you know? Um in other words, if that was the response, and I'm not saying it's not the response, I'm sure there's many, uh, you know, parents that would uh, deem that an appropriate response. But what I'm asking you you to do is consider, okay, well, what then does that create within that five-year-old? Does that, yes, does that, you know, um, does that cultivate self-esteem, self-confidence, self-love, self-approval, self-appreciation, self-acknowledgement, or does that reaffirm that there must be something wrong with me? I'm not lovable. So when when we're meeting our own inner child aspects as an adult, 
remember that they are an inner child, part of you. And what does every child look for? What is it really seeking? It's seeking to be comforted, reassured, held. Yes. You know, and unconditional love for, you know, the vast majority of people is, is a concept that is so far out there that it's not actually something that they can connect with as, as a tangible um, tool to work with. And so we have to break that down. If I said to you, what do you think that part of you really is looking for? If it's a child looking uh, for reassurance, then reassurance and comforting and words of comfort so that that child actually feels accepted and approved of for exactly who they are, just the way they are. Now, that's unconditional love. But often that word eludes people as to what does it look uh, like? It's tan- yeah, yeah, it's tangibility, you know. Yeah. I just want to honor you, Joe, for that beautiful inner child just education there, because this is, again, you're unaware of this, but this is a big part of the work that I do in this world, a big part of this show, long list, long time listeners, you know, big theme of this, the cosmic love antenna is this connection to this beautiful inner child and everything you just said was such a beautiful affirmation of not just things that I've been sharing, but also my own journey. And I hadn't put that, that, unworthiness piece and the inner child together before so thank you for that that beautiful domino i i want to go a bit deeper into the shadow work now joe and and i want to share a story with everyone and then get your feedback on this because i know you have some and this this story is you know and joe's been describing it beautifully thus far about this 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 accepting of all of oneself when we start to do something called like shadow work or we start to uh, reparent or approach all the parts of our inner group consciousness that is needing love and attention and awareness and 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 needing to be moved through. And very recently in in the in the education that Joe has been guiding me through, I started setting out my days with an intention. And for people listening, if you've heard me speak about this this before, an intention is very powerful, right? When we set an intention, we're putting our love into tension, right? We're putting our potential into tension. So do not underestimate the power of an intention. And my intention uh, a couple of weeks ago now was for during the day to have my shadow aspects come up, to have all of my shadow aspects come up so I could meet them, love them, and do all the beautiful shadow work and and things that we've just been talking about for the last you know 10 15 minutes but what i was unaware of was how much i would get what i would uh, was asking for and i came to joe and was sharing with her that my days were very difficult because every interaction that i was having with every single person in every single situation i was being triggered i was all of my aspects exactly what I asked for, all the shadow aspects were coming up to be seen. And I was definitely seeing, feeling, and moving <laughs> through them. So I asked to Joe, I asked Joe, what do I do? What do I, how do I move through this? Am I doing something wrong? So I'd love to pass you the mic, <laughs> mic Joe, and maybe you can speak to this and go a little bit deeper on this shadow work that most of us <laughs> move through on this spiritual path. Well, you know, thankfully, it's like the fourth time that uh, I've heard you share this now. So I'm, <laughs> I'm somewhat past my... You're grounded. Um, yeah, my laughter with, <laughs> with your choice. Um, you know, same as what I said to you in class when, when, when you shared. Um, you know, you're, you're getting exactly what you're asking for. So, you know, again, a beautiful lesson in the power that we all hold through the law of resonance. But if you're not wanting to, you know, attract that energy, then of course, you know, my answer to you, first of all, was, was, you know, 
why are you calling in on your shadows? And I understand that, um, again, it comes back to what we said right at the very beginning. Isn't it funny how, you know, what we go looking for to develop ourselves is what it is that we need to improve upon, what it is that we need to change because it's not good enough. We need to transform this. And we go searching for all of these things. Yet our highest potential lies within our light, not our shadow. Yes, there is always a gift to be unwrapped when we work with our, our shadow and therefore it gives birth to a higher potential. But if we want to work with our shadows, then we need to embrace them with our light. If we're meeting our shadow just with another shadow, then it's just two shadows at each other. And, you know, wars are built on that. So if we're wanting to actually consciously work with our shadow energy, then first of all, we, we have to open up and allow ourselves to be filled with enough light quotient to actually be able to work with the shadow. And this is the difference between metaphysical spiritual work through metaphysical means, which is really understanding spirituality through the lower mind, and the transcendent spiritual work, which is engaging um, through the consciousness of your heart, through really opening, opening up through the higher mind. Some call it the universal mind or the mind of God or, or your higher self. Um, if, if we're wanting to work consciously to shift any vibrational energy that's in that lower dimensional frequency, we, we have to open and lift our vibration to at least the fifth dimension where we can sit in compassion for oneself and open and expand our heart's energy to a point where we can at least sit and like a parent would yeah, hold encompass. the child. Yeah. And that's, that's what I started to do. And I noticed a change, <laughs> just the, the, the intention that I then set as Joe's describing. So just for people listening, the practicality of this, now my morning start with calling forth. I set the intention of calling forth all of my light aspects to embody them throughout the day. And then in their own time, in their own time, when the shadow aspects come up or the unresolved karma comes up, then I'll meet them from that space of light aspect embodiment so I can invite them back into my love. Mm. Right. So it's a slight distinction. <laughs> you know, one, one thing I would like to, to share with everybody is, is understanding that we don't have to go looking for our shadow aspects. This is, this is why it's so, so important that, you know, if you're waking up in the morning and you're setting an intention, yes, set the intention to embrace your light, to call forward your higher self, to uh, connect to your soul, whatever that ritual of connection is for yourself. Because through the universal laws that govern us, we will naturally meet through the law of reflection whatever shadow energy that we're needing to work with whenever it is that we're needing to work with it. That's what the law provides for us. It provides for us through the law of reflection, the opportunity to become aware of an energy because we react and are triggered by the law of reflection. It gives us the opportunity to become aware of an energy that isn't serving us, that is triggering us. Now, you know, we... All we've got to do is just live life. We don't have to go looking for that. Just living life itself will provide that opportunity as and when you're, you know, 
you need it and you, that you're ready to, to move through an initiation like that. In the meantime, continue to embrace your light. <laughs> I think a big part of it, Joe, just to be totally transparent, for, and this is for everyone's sake, I, I think a big part of it is is getting stuck in the superhero archetype, right? The 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 for me, right? It was this need that I need to be doing all the things all the time, especially within the healing work. I'm doing my shadow work. I'm in the school. I need to open my channel, do all the things. So I need to, you know, I need to be doing all the shadows. I need to make sure they're coming forth because if I'm not doing it, I'm not moving on my spiritual path, and I'm not opening my channel and doing the things that I deserve to do. So, and I would just share with everyone. You know, ask yourself: Are you are you unconsciously falling into that archetype that I often find myself in when I'm in that boat? And you mm -hmm. explaining that to me, you know, really pulled me out of that. Oh, that's that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing right there. Mm -hmm. Joe, I'd love to throw another question here now, and this one is is on my spiritual path that I've been on. It's relatively <clears throat> as my throat chakra blocks. Uh, it's relatively, uh, I don't want to say new, but fresh and and it's expanding. It's the it's the area of my life that's expanding the quickest on my spiritual path, and it is that our connection to guides and angels and masters and all of these loving entities that are outside of us that are there to support us and guide us if we choose to lean into it. So I'm wondering if you can speak to this, Joe. For, for all of the souls listening that are on the spiritual path of love and they're looking to connect to whether it's ascended masters, whether it's angels, whether it's ancestors, guides, whoever they desire, what would you offer them? What tips, what from your experience has been helpful as you've leaned into this? Honestly, Harrison, the very first thing that I would guide people to is connecting to their higher self before they start wandering off wanting to. This again, this is what we do. It comes from a lack of self-worth. We don't think we're worthy enough to connect with our own divine spirit. So let's go and connect with someone else's. Let's go and connect with a master. Let's go and connect with an archangel or an angel. Let's go and connect with some shamanic guide, some Native American shaman. Let's go and connect with, you know, the dolphins, the and all the while, what I'm going to say is that that connection is cultivated through the connection to your own divine presence. The other thing that I want to say is that um, and and I know what you mean, but it's so important when we become conscious of the words that we use. You you mentioned before, you know, um, guides, masters, um, enlightened beings outside of us. The truth is they're not outside of us. We, we are connected to them through the web of light that connects all things. And to deepen that connection, strengthen that connection. It requires us to go deeply into our own heart's portal, in, inward, not outward. We need to travel and take our energy inwards through our heart portal to access our multidimensional nature and our multidimensional energy bodies that then give us the connection to higher realms of consciousness yeah. in whatever dimension that they may sit in. It's so if anyone, if you're listening to this and you take anything from this chat today, I hope you take more than one thing, but if you take anything, it's that last, that last sentence that Joe just shared. That's probably been the biggest, uh, you know, and that's saying a lot, Joe, but it's probably been the biggest realization I've had in your presence is that, and I've, I've, I've theoretically understood it in the past, but in the, especially in this spiritual conversation, there's such a big difference between mentally understanding something and then embodying that truth. And what you just said about the, the inward journey being, you know, reciprocated outwards, right? The deeper we go inside, it's a contrasted to what is expressed outwards. 
you know, it's just profound. It's just, and I'm still learning, still, you know, moving through it myself. But that, um, it leads me perfectly into another question I want to ask you, Joe. I think it'd be good to add in here. How would you define the ascension process? Because you just talked about, you know, connecting to higher dimensions. And I think it's very easy for us to hear that. And I know I often fall into this. When we think higher dimensions, we think these things that are stacked on to each other, right? So I'm connecting to my higher self. So I'm going up into a higher level. And then, so maybe explain this, Joe, from what you were just saying, you know, where does the ascension process come into this and how is it linked to what you were just saying about the inwards journey? Well, first of all, let's just be clear that dimensions aren't other places. We, all dimensions reside here. The third dimension is within all other dimensions. So when we're talking about dimensions, we are really speaking to a vibrational shift. So as we experience a vibrational shift from what we might call the density of the third dimension, and we call it dense because we describe um, energy, thoughts, feelings, patterns of behavior, that create us to feel limited in some way. And that's what we mean by dense. As we learn to master our own energy, as we learn to work with our own vibration and uplift that vibration, how do we uplift that vibration? We do we uplift the vibration by breathing in the light of source that is all around us. It's in the ether. It's in the voidal space all around us as also within us. It's within every single cell, atom, quark of your body. And so when we are looking to expand our consciousness, to expand into a dimension of consciousness that holds more light, what does that mean? It holds more unity. It holds more oneness, less separation. The consciousness of an energy that sees us in separation is back in that density where we might describe uh, the j- judging somebody. Yeah? When we move into a higher vibration because we are making a conscious choice to open up our chakras, to open up our energy bodies and receive the love, the light of source. When we do that, we enlighten, that's where the word comes from, right? We enlighten ourselves. We bring light in. And as a result, we feel lighter. We feel lighter because we have lifted the frequency that we're holding. We've lifted the energy that we're holding into a higher truth. You can call it a higher truth or a deeper truth. And all Truth, truth that is what I call truth, universal truth, always holds the consciousness of oneness within it. 
Now there are levels of truth. But the deeper the truth, the more unified that energy feels and therefore the guidance, the wisdom that you receive when you open to receive through a fifth dimension of consciousness or sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth and beyond, you are receiving deeper truth each time. And that deeper truth just brings us more into understanding the nature of oneness and our interconnectedness to everything, all things, all beings, regardless of how they behave, regardless of what they do, say, regardless of the fact that they may be um, choosing to act and behave from a place of their ego, you, when your vibration is lifted, it, it allows you, it supports you to see that person beyond the limitations of their personality. And it allows you to open feel, your heart. yes, open your heart and, and see their light. Now, ascension, ascension, which I used to think was the, um, the death process of, you know, me dying and my soul lifting and merging again, transitioning back into light. I always thought that that was ascension. What I've since learned from the masters is that the ascension process is so much more than that. The ascension process itself isn't just the unification of you as a soul extension, unifying with the light, the ascension process is actually all the soul extensions of your soul unifying. It is then all the souls within your monadic group unifying. It's then all of your monads of your divine presence unifying. Now, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a huge concept um, and not something that your mind and intellect will ever be able to, to comprehend. So please don't try to. It's not an, it's not an intellectual um, pursuit. It's really an understanding that the process of ascension is the unification of all parts of your consciousness through all time, space, and dimension, through all groups that you work with. Mm. So thank you for that, Joe. There's a lot in there, and I want people listening to that so I want to pull out a couple of things that you said because it's. I want to give a little bit of context here for everyone listening. I want to go back to what you said before about the enlightening piece and that enlightening the moment. I think a big part in my experience, and I think a lot of people get lost in this too, is we see that enlightenment is a, we think and feel it's a destination. But what you were saying and what I've come to feel realize in my own journey is that that enlightening of it's a moment by moment choice that we can make, right? And I, that's p powerful, right? Because that I know for me, and maybe people listening can resonate with this, that releases just so much expectation, so much pressure, so much, oh, I need to get to this spot. No, you just need to be here in this moment and make that choice from love rather than from separation or fear or you know, unresolved karma. I also really enjoy 
and you've shared with me with this, you've shared this with me in the past too, the frequency shifting and analogy we can use is like a radio, right? We're not, we're not going to different, you know, linear layers, but we're shifting frequencies here in the same spot. Right? So now not only are we enlightening situations by the choice that we're making, we're also switching frequencies based off those choices and expanding outwards and inwards another analogy that you've used like a jellyfish right so i think just as you know the people listening to your beautiful explanation there those images that you've shared with me in the past they really help with that beautiful journey and i joe referred to the masters can you quickly describe joe and then we'll jump to another question here who do you mean by the masters just so people understand mm, so through the um, sacred mystery schools that I've chosen to um, explore and, and, and learn through, uh, which is with a lot of my early work was um, with a, a channel called Kuala Samara Phoenix. Uh, and then a little later, uh, for the last you know 15 years, I've been working with um, in Nasa Mabu Ishtar. And um, both of these teachers are embodied channels of ascended masters. Um, ascended masters are um, enlightened beings. Some of them have walked the earth many, many incarnations and come into self-mastery of this realm of matter and so that they have mastered their light in the form of matter. And as a result, they have come into full enlightenment and um, chosen to reside in uh, enlightened realms in a higher dimension of consciousness and be in service to humanity uh, through those realms by offering them their teachings of their own gifts, their own mastery. And those teachings are deeply um, profound teachings that help us to um, enlighten our consciousness, help us to connect to our light, to our spirit, help us to understand the nature of our being, which is part of the path of remembrance, and, and how to um, be a master manipulator of energy. Now, you know, some people might think that the word manipulator, you know, has a negative connotation, but in truth, that's exactly what we're doing. Every time we're shape-shifting from one dimension to another, we're manipulating the vibration of the energy mm. that we're holding to shift our consciousness and and i think then co-create with the with the universe right that i mm. think that shifting of consciousness helps us then express our creation through our soul with everything around us too right yes and i think it's also a really important um important point to remember that through the process of creation a lot of people in my experience over the years of, of mentoring and, and, and teaching, a lot of people put, as, as did I, so I've learned this really through myself, um, watching how long or for how long I used to put the emphasis on the actual choice that I was making, right? It's all about making the right choice. And the emphasis, therefore, was on the action I was taking, the choice that I was making. In truth, the process of manifestation is the, the choice and the action itself is, is just the process. The what it is that you actually end up manifesting is the consciousness that made the choice. The actual energy, the consciousness that's choosing, become aware of that. That is so much more important because that's where your power is. 
It's in the energy that's making the choice, not the choice or action itself. You can make the same choice out of a place of fear, or you can make the same choice out of a place of uh, comfort, confidence and unity, and you're going to get two completely different manifestations. So was it the choice itself? No. It's the consciousness and the energy that is making the choice that you are going to manifest an experience of in some way. Yeah. It, it goes back to what we were talking about with my example before of the intention that I was setting to bring forth the shadow aspects or I was embodying uh, that consciousness of, okay, I need to do, the, do all the things, need to get the, get the shadow aspects up. So I was manifesting all those things and attracting and through the law of resonance and reflection. And um, yeah, it's just, it's powerful. These laws that are running, governing everything around us. Joe, I have a couple more questions here that I want to get in before we have to wrap up. And I just mm -hmm. want to say that I was sharing with you, I was feeling, you know, a little bit nervous and anxious before this chat, but you know, I'm just, I'm really grateful for you. And I feel like I'm in such a loving, I mean, your loving energy in this container. And I, I appreciate all that you shared with me today and everyone listening. I, I have two more questions to finish this chat off. And I also want to hear a little bit of something that you've come to share with us today. But before I get to that, I think this is an important question that I want to get in. And, you know, we've been talking today about the spiritual path, the spiritual path of love that we are all on, whether we are consciously aware of it or not in many ways. I'm wondering, Joe, what is your opinion on why it's, and this is maybe just, this is just my perspective. And I want to hear your thoughts on this. I feel it's more important than ever in this moment right now, in this time that we're in, whether it's from a earth perspective, everything that's happening in the earth, whether you want to go a bit further than that in terms of the cosmos. What are your thoughts, Joe, on why it's more important than ever, ever for us to be taking this spiritual path of love at the moment and awakening and doing all the stuff that we've been talking about today? Well, as many of your listeners will know, we are um, in this new age of Aquarius, uh, which offers us this huge opportunity and shift in, in paradigm and Part of that shift is to to move out of the old paradigm of of the masculine energy in its um, in its shadow, which is all about control. And and part of the age of Aquarius is is to move us into the divine feminine and to bring more of the divine feminine, more of the unity and the love into the earth's atmosphere in, onto onto this planet earth and this is we're at a pivotal point we're, we've only just started um you know age of aquarius is something like i don't know what 2000 2700 and something you know uh years um and so we are just on on the beginning of of this journey but we we can see just through what the world the planet and humanity have been going through in the last 2 to 3 years that we are going through huge change and transformation mm. at the level of the collective uh with all change and transformation comes chaos comes destruction, comes shadow. Uh, the shadow, yeah. right? The enlightening of energy consciousness that needs to be alchemized. Mm -hmm. um, and so the more individuals that choose to awaken and become conscious creators 
the the more we are going to support Mother Earth mm -hmm. on her journey of ascension. She's, mm -hmm. you know, she She's also a soul too. is, yes, and she is also on a path of, of ascension into a new universe. And we are all here as these pillars of light supporting her ascension. And, you know, the sooner we can all start to wake up to become a bit more conscious as to why we're here and what the purpose of us being here is as spiritual beings of light that are supporting the evolution and growth, expansion of Mother Earth, um, the more unity, the more harmony, the more peace we're going to bring. And, you know, that takes each and every one of us to, to choose it. It's not going to happen by itself. Um, you know, lots of people, I think, sit in this prediction, you know, we're going to go this way, we're going to go that way. Then I hear people going, oh, no, we got the golden age. It's going to come. That's, you know, that's just set in stone. Nothing is set in stone. This is what people need to wake up and realize, that the golden age is going to manifest itself because you choose it, not because you just passively sit there and wait. It, it'll manifest itself because you're choosing to enlighten yourself to its potential to the resonant consciousness of of what the golden age, uh, the divine feminine coming into more peace and harmony and balance and unity within yourself, within your families, within your communities, that is something you have to choose. And you have to, first of all, start to choose to work on that within yourself. That's the first step. You are part of the collective. You are one of the great collective of souls. And the sooner we start to realize that we are one in a collective and part of the whole, and we start working together, um, then we move more towards our potential. And everything that we've been going through, of course, is highlighting where the work needs to be done. I think that's the piece. So first of all, Joe, thank you for that. That was, it's so profound when we start to reflect these deeper truths back to ourselves. And it's, it's funny slash not funny that it always comes back to the inner work, right? It always comes back to, oh, this is me showing up in my beautiful light, being an example to then inspire other people. but. You know, I can't not also point, pull out what you just said at the end there of being in tribes, being in collectives, right? Yes, do the inner work on yourself, but if you have the opportunity to do that inner work also in a tribe of people who are also doing that inner work, right? Now it's a, you know, it's a group consciousness piece that we've been talking about this entire show, right? It's, you know, I, I had the pleasure to be in a group with you, right? I have my own group that I'm coaching, right? It's This is not a Joe and Harrison thing. This is something that that we can all step into with that beautiful enlightened choice that you talked about to be pillars of light or be cosmic love antennas together, right? To be these frequencies that embody what it really means to be a group consciousness, right? Mm. Mm. Exactly. Exactly. And this is, you know, in the last two to three years, um, you know, I have seen more and more and, and, and you know, as the schools that I teach uh, open up every year, the there are more and more people hungry for this work. There are more and more people that are, you know, thirsty to come together and and work and play with like-minded people within this realm of um, learning to enlighten yourself and learning to work with your energy. And it is incredibly powerful when you come together and work in group consciousness, um, the rippling effect that each of you have on the group heart that is grounded whenever you come together and work as a group 
um, is deeply profound and and transformation is accelerated as a result. And and the parts of you that would lag behind and sh- and 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 take so much longer to change and trans- transform if you were doing it all by yourself, when you're part of a group, you get carried. And so there's a part of your consciousness that as much as it may be sitting in resistance to the change and the transformation, when you're going through it in a group, that group helps to carry that energy and help you. whatever one person is working on within themselves in the group, it gets worked on on behalf of everybody else in the group. Yeah. Well, and Joe, actually what I think that is too, and Ishtar has shared this before, I know with all of us and probably also you, the that that's the difference between energy and frequency. Right? Mm-hmm. I think that what you're talking about there is that that shared frequency is impacting everyone, everyone in the group consciousness. Right. I think that's the Ishtar explains just for people that Ishtar is is one of the other masters and leaders and channels of the school that um that Joe and I are a part of. And this shift that we're all going through, a part of this shift is still doing the energy work, but now also encompassing the frequency work. Mm. And it's, it's, and this is, this is the difference is um, you're going to see it more and more over the next, you know, 10, 20, 30 years and really frequency work, high frequency work um, has really only been around for the last, you know, 10, 10 to 15 years. Uh, And you know, courses, personal development courses, transformational courses, uh, as I said before, you know, there are a lot of them, but they work very much through the metaphysical. And that's not working with higher consciousness. That's still working through the lower mind. And so, you know, the work that we do through these schools are about receiving uh, high frequency transmissions from the masters that support us to upgrade our own software and support us to expand the the vibration that we're holding to a higher dimensional consciousness. Um, And that only comes through when you start to actually work with frequency. Mm -hmm. Well, Joe, we could speak about this for hours. And we don't have hours, and we actually have our own, <laughs> our own beautiful class later today at this time of this recording. So, I want to be mindful of your energy. I have uh, one more question I want to finish with, but before I get to that, Joe, you've spent a lot of time with us today, sharing a lot of your gifts and knowledge and your frequency and your love. If people tuning in have really been pulled to what you've been saying, they they want to reach out, they want to get in touch, they want to maybe do some of the things, see some of the things you're doing in the world. What, how can people get in touch with you? I know you have your website, you have your, your programs. What do you want to share? Mm, the, my, you know, my website's probably the easiest point of call. Um, it's just joannarushton.com. Uh, I'm on Insta. Um, I think my Insta handle is <laughs> joe underscore rushton underscore. Uh, but you know, uh, those that want to find me, they'll find me. I'm not too worried about that. Yeah. And I make it super easy, Joe, if for everyone listening, you'll see all of Joe's details in the, in the podcast play. If you go to details of the show, you'll see her website, you'll see her social media and you can get in touch with her there. Uh, Joe, my final question I want to throw you, and then I, I would love to, you've offered to share a prayer with us to finish. So I'll, I'll throw this question at you and then we'll finish with the prayer because I think this will put us in a nice frequency for the prayer itself. This, the show is called the cosmic love antenna. And for me, we are all those cosmic antennas. We are that cosmic antenna of love. We've been talking about it a lot today. When you do that inner work, you connect your own inner spiritual heart space of love. You then become that example of that loving light and you expand outwards. I'm wondering though, Joe, how do you define that love word personally? Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know that I can, Harrison. It's a feeling. Uh, there, there aren't the words 
that I have come across yet <laughs> that can uh, do justice or articulate the it's it's a frequency mm -hmm. and it's a frequency that you feel that creates uh, within you a very deep knowing. And when you reach that point, you actually reach a point beyond needing words because there are no more questions. Not a not a surprising answer, my friend. That was that's that was a very beautiful uh, Joe way of explaining that, and I could not agree more, my friend. Thank you for sharing your feeling on the love. I would love to pass you now in that frequency feeling. You have a prayer that you would love to share with us. Mm, I would, and you know, I'll invite your listeners just to close their eyes while they receive this prayer, which actually I didn't realize um, when I was guided to share it with you. Uh, you've been speaking about the, the path of love, and this prayer is actually from the path of love, which is the second year in the um, Master's Way course uh, that we teach. So this prayer is called the Petals of the Heart Prayer. I call now to the petal of faith and ask it to open in my heart. I give thanks now for the faith in God, and I give thanks for the presence of God and the grace of the Holy Spirit in my life and on the earth. I call now to the petal of surrender in my heart, and I ask for it to open now. I accept and embrace God's will, and I let go of my own will. I ask now for my eyes to open so that I may see. I ask now for my ears to open that I may hear. And I ask now for the petals of my heart to open so that I may receive the will of the divine in my life. I call now and ask for the petal of service in my heart to open. I confirm my commitment to create heaven on earth through the love of God and the love of my brothers and sisters on the earth. I pray now for the enlightenment to remember my promise to God and my promise to myself that I may fulfill what I have come to the earth to do in service to the divine plan and to humanity. I call now to the petal of abundance to open in my heart. I give thanks to God for all you have provided to me, for I know that when I live in harmony, in alignment to divine will, and honour the promise I have made in service to humanity and the divine plan, I will always know the beauty of abundance in my life and never want. I call now for the petal of forgiveness to open in my heart. I forgive all those I have harmed in any way, and I ask for forgiveness from all those that have harmed myself in any way. I forgive all those who have harmed me in any way and all those who have caused me pain consciously or unconsciously. I ask to be forgiven by anyone that I have harmed, offended, or cause pain to. And I forgive myself for all my actions and thoughts that are not aligned to unconditional love and divine will. I pray that one day we may all realize God's essence within us and remember our promise to the divine plan and to humanity so that we may fulfill this on the earth in loving kindness. I call now to the petal of strength to open in my heart. I ask for the strength, the wisdom, and the knowledge to remain focused upon my path and to release all attachments, expectations, and beliefs 
that keep me separate from God consciousness within myself and the unconditional love of all things. I release now all attachments I hold to judgment, to anger, to fear, to unworthiness, to envy or jealousy, and to all things that hold me in separation to my divine truth. I call now to the petal of trust to open in my heart. I ask now for the divine essence of creator source to fill me on all levels of my being, and I ask for my divine presence to be present in my life so that I may walk in God consciousness on the earth and be all that I am. I am a child of light. I am a child of love. I am a child of God. Blessed I am. Blessed I am. Blessed I am. What a lovely, what a lovely piece of love to finish off this chat. Joe, I love you very much. Thank you for spending your time with me today. Thank you for dancing with me in this cosmic spiritual uh, heart space today. I appreciate you. I'll see you very soon. <laughs> but for the people out there in the listening, in the listening lounge, tuning into this podcast, thank you for tuning in today we hope you got some value some guidance some some steps to take on this spiritual path until next time here on the show we send you love we send you light and we'll see you all very soon bye everyone thank you for listening to the cosmic love antenna podcast we hope you enjoyed be sure to follow harrison on instagram twitter and clubhouse at harrison ma that's harrison m-e-a